Thank you for coming. We have a major problem which is threatening the future of our planet. It's the food we are eating. Food? Food. Food. Yes, food. Let me explain. Open your dossier in front of you. In there, you'll find images of the hidden side of much of today's farming and food production. We all want cheap food, but at what cost? So, the big picture. If everyone in the world lived and ate like we do in this country, we'd need three planets, not one. Three? Three. 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 Is there an echo in here? Yes, three. Our Earth can only take so much. So what's the score then, boss? I want to know how we can eat food that is better for us and for the environment. We've only got one planet, so we need to start to learn how to look after it. Most scientists agree that the pollution which humans create is changing our climate. Nearly a third of our personal impact on the climate comes from the way our food is grown, processed and transported. Adesh, I want the lowdown on this apple. It's imported. I want to know why. How did it get here? Why are we not eating British apples? Total surveillance. Get the picture? Yes, boss. Louis, we knew nothing about the meat in this sausage. What kind of farm did it come from? What kind of life did the animal have? How did it affect the environment? What are the alternatives? You get the idea? Yes, boss. Josephine, I'm setting you a challenge. These days, few of us make the time to find out where the ingredients in our food come from, let alone make it from scratch. I want you to take a processed ready meal out of the fridge. I want you to trace the ingredients and then remake it using local ingredients from within 50 miles of your home. OK, boss. Right, I want you lot back here in 48 hours. Now hop in. Yes, yes boss. boss. I can't believe all the packaging on the TV dinners. There is card and plastic, plastic, card, card and plastic, card and foil, and 70% of it's not going to get recycled. So, my mission? Find out where the ingredients came from and make a pizza with local ingredients within 50 miles. Quite a Most lot, of our pork comes from Norfolk, which I think is one of the larger areas in this country for the production of pigs. And how much meat would you say came through uh, the market and your Through this store? market, probably about 300 tonnes a week. All here, we probably move about 100 tonnes a week. But we sell about 100 pigs a day. Yeah, I was wondering if we could help me with one of your um, products. Yeah, can you tell me the origin of the pizza base? France. The tomatoes? Greece. Portugal. The garlic puree? Where? Argentina. Chile. Why do we import all this fruit into the UK? Um, people want to buy apples all the year round. They're like bananas, apples, bananas. People like them in a lunchbox. They're nice and easy to eat. They're portable, they don't make a mess. Well, isn't that bad for the environment? Because you're kind of flying them over from different continents. Where you get a big impact is bringing um, very much out of season fruit in by air. Then you do get a, big, a, a much bigger environmental impact. It's much more the, the lighter, the lighter things, the much more perishable things, like raspberries. I mean, these will be English raspberries. These are, the, well, actually, they're not English. It says grown in the actually, USA. Actually, you're right. Actually. Look at this. 
Yeah, you're quite right. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, there are English raspberries available. These will have been flown in from the USA. For every ten pieces of fruit we eat, nine have been grown in other countries and brought here by road, ship or plane. Only one has been grown here in the UK. Now that is a monster fact. Hungary, Spain and Canary Islands. Um, black pepper. India. And the red peppers. If people knew that like importing fruit into the UK would cause an environmental impact when they're not in season here, wouldn't they say, OK, let's just leave it when they're out of season? I think they might, actually. Yeah, that, that's true. But you have to educate people to buy the fruits that are in season. Yellow peppers, aubergines, courgettes, Italy. The cheddar cheese, and mozzarella, Republic of Ireland. If you add together the distance travelled by all the ingredients in Josephine's supermarket pizza, it comes to a whopping total of 24,598 food miles. That's once round the world. I mean, look at these things, seasonal apples okay. from South Africa. They may be seasonal in South Africa, but they're certainly not seasonal here. What seasonal actually means is this. Look. This is new season. This is seasonal. This is UK, English produced, English produced. What can people do to kind of help this? If you buy as much in-season fruit as you possibly can, whatever it may be, eat apples in season, eat strawberries in season, enjoy them while they're there and then forget them for a year. What I'm going to do now is source all of the same ingredients from the pizza locally within 50 miles of my home. My first port of call, Hexham Farmers Market. Well, my mum said that when she was married, she only had meat once a week because it was a treat. But nowadays, you can get it whenever you want. Well, it's true, meat has got really cheap and, you know, this is bad news for us probably because we eat too much of it for our own health. It's bad news for the animals and it's bad news for the planet. What, what effects does this have on the planet and maybe us? Animals used to be kept outside. They were in the fields. Each farmer had, you know, some animals but not too many. But now you can keep maybe 500 pigs in one shed, maybe 20,000 chickens just in one shed. What is intensive farming? I've got some video clips. Have a look at this. All the animals kept indoors, a whole swathes of countryside, end up just growing crops just to feed animals. In fact, about a third, over a third of the world's cereal crops are now fed to farm animals. So what should we do about it? Well, I think what you can do is overall eat less meat, but when you do eat meat, try and eat the organic meat. What is organic? Well, in organic farming, it's just like the total opposite of what we've been talking about. You keep the animals in much better conditions. They're never kept just on concrete. They have nice straw bedding when they're inside and they go out in the fields and they get a lot of their own food. It would be great to see a working organic farm. Well, I know just the place for you to go and visit. John, you're an organic farmer, so why is, why is organic farming better for the environment? Well, I guess the first thing about organic farming and the environment is that we try and farm with the environment. We try and farm with nature rather than trying to control it. What we've got here is some animals that are helping to increase the fertility in the soil, making the soil better so that it then helps us to grow crops after we've produced meat from the same area. By keeping small numbers of pigs outdoors and moving them from field to field, organic farmers use the animals' poo to improve the soil and help grow crops. 
When pigs are kept in sheds on intensive farms, their poo ends up stored as slow in huge tanks. When this is spread on the land, it uses loads of fuel. So, what's slurry? OK, well, slurry is uh, it's really a word that just covers anything to do with sort of poo and water mixed. You just tell me what slurry is, but I can't actually see any to say that you said pigs produce it. I can't see any anywhere. Well, well that's right, and that's one of the things that's, that's very different, again, about our system with the animals all being outside all the time. They're obviously producing poo. We talked about the poo and it doing some good to the ground, but that's the difference that in this system, all that muck, all that manure, all that goodness is just going straight back into the ground naturally. complete and I have to make a pizza all with the ingredients that's within 50 miles and um, could you tell me about your cheese is it like locally produced all the farmers markets produced is locally produced um, and it's all produced by the people who actually sell the product and that's why it's such good fun to come here because you get to taste all of it before you buy it as yeah. well which you <laughs> don't do anywhere else would you like to try some yes please. that's our fresh little Dexter cow cheese and that was made on Monday Mmm, that's lovely. So what exactly is organic farming? That's a good question. It's about uh, working with nature rather than trying to control it. OK. So we allow our beneficial insects to sort out the ones we don't want. We had a biodiversity survey carried out on this farm about seven or eight years ago, which revealed that there was a greater number of, of plant species and insect species within the orchard compared with the average non-organic holding. And the biodiversity, would, you'd be looking at the different ranges of different species and plants and insects living in there. Indeed. <laughs> On average, organic farms have twice as many insects, birds and flowers as non-organic farms. Many of the insects on organic farms help to control pests that eat farmers' crops, meaning that organic farmers use less chemicals like pesticides. What can people like us do to help? Well, for a start, um, people can be encouraged to uh, eat local, eat organic. Also, you can encourage um, schools and, and communities to plant orchards. Right, Adesh, we have over 50 varieties of uh, apples and pears on this farm. This variety is known as full staff. That's for you. Okay. Oh, that is really nice. Can I have some large tomatoes? Some, uh, some large tomatoes, right? Okay. Some peppers, some onions, some courgettes, and an aubergine. Is this all packaged to get here? No, we tend to just pick it fresh, put it into the boxes and bring it to market. What type of oil is it? It's, it's rapeseed oil. Mmm, <laughs> it's lovely. Sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank what, you. What's this? Uh... Well, this is, uh, this is what I like to call factor 25 for pigs. Um, what we have is we have a, a little pig shower here and it creates a wallow for them because pig skin is very much like our skin and they can get sunburned and they can get very, very hot in the summer. So when the pig gets a bit hot, over he or she comes and has a, a roll in the mud and they get covered in the mud and that stops them getting sunburned. So it's like sunscreen? A bit like that, absolutely. I think it'd be pretty cool to be a pig, especially maybe you mean a pig here would be quite cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got toys? Yeah, toys to play with. You don't have to go to school. Don't have to go to school, that's a bonus. Yeah. I'm here at Gilchester's flour mill and I'm here to get some flour for my pizza. Here's your grain of corn. Yeah. Now the flour that you uh, want to make your pizza with is white, isn't it? Yeah. And you can see that looks rather brown. Yeah. Yeah? Now, there we go. Broken the open. It's white. Oh, it's white inside, absolutely. Now we need to get that through the mill, so we take the bran off, and we get to that white flour inside. So should we turn the mill on? Yeah. And put some of that through and see what comes out the other end. Little step there. You see the see, see all the corn inside oh, there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Good luck with your pizza. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hello Josie, uh, I'm Nigel, I'm from Scottswood Community Garden and uh, welcome today, uh, come and make pizza with us. Uh, I see you've brought a whole load of stuff. Yeah. Okay, well first off we need to make the base, so we'll make some dough with your nice uh, flour from Gilchester's. Lots of people associate pizza with fast food, but this is a slow food pizza because we're starting with the raw ingredients and making everything from, from scratch, making the dough and making the pizza sauce and making the toppings and grating the cheese to put on. Slide it on if you can. Carefully carry it over. Put it next to mine, right next to it. And then throw it back like that. Okay, that's fantastic. This is hot. Mmm. No, it's honestly delicious. Heaven on a piece of pizza. Great. Well, it's nutritious, it's local, and it's been great for making it. Thanks very much. Thank you. It's very nice. It's delicious. Good. Good. Josephine bought the ingredients for her pizza from within 50 miles of her home. All the vegetables came from one nearby farm, and when all the other ingredients were added together, the total was only 322 food miles. Welcome back everyone. Louis. What did you find out about meat? Rearing animals for meat uses loads more energy than growing vegetables. And what else? I thought that most farm animals lived outside in fields. What I didn't know is that most chickens and pigs are kept indoors in intensive farms so that meat can be cheap for everyone. What can we do about it? We could eat less meat. And now that I've seen pigs living happily outdoors on John's farm, it is worth paying extra so that you know where your foods come from. Adash, what's the score with our fruit? Well, we all know we need to eat fruit, but the trouble is, boss, we want all kinds of fruit all year round, and most of us don't really think about where it comes from. Why is this not good for planet Earth? Lots of fruit is moved around the world by road, ship, and even by air, leading to more and more climate change. All this, just so we can have strawberries in January. What can we do about it? Look out for local fruit, and if you can, choose organic. That way we can look forward to enjoying fruit in season, when it tastes the best. Juicy, ripe. Josephine, did you manage to achieve your mission? The mission was a success, boss. I made a new version of the pizza with ingredients which are all locally grown. And how does that help? It reduces food miles, as well as helping local farmers and producers. Great work, guys. I can see this is just the beginning. We can't take our food for granted. The future of the planet is in your hands.